Hi, I'm Ryan Nickel, CTO at DSA Ocean, and today I want to talk about wave and current interaction in Proteus DS. So we had a user question on the topic of wave and current interaction and what's happening and why does it happen and what are the implications on floating systems in these kinds of scenarios. So to illustrate this, what I decided to do was create a scenario, actually three scenarios, where we have an irregular sea state, a John Swap sea state with four meter significant wave height an eight second peak period. And then I also started playing with an, an opposing or a following uniform current with one and a half meters per second. So the short story is that when there's an opposing current, it shortens the wavelengths of the waves. It doesn't affect the period, but it shortens the wavelengths. And then you get steeper wave conditions. Uh, similarly, when you have a following current, it stretches out the wavelengths of the waves. And again, the period doesn't change, but you get much less steep waves. And we can see this in uh, the visualizations I'm going to show in a second. However, one thing to be aware of is when you have an opposing current, uh, it can shorten the wavelength so much that both the waves will exceed uh, uh, their breaking limit that physically won't be possible for them to, to get so steep. And in some cases, uh, the, the shortened wavelengths just numerically can't be resolved as well. And that, that means that they, they're physically not possible in reality either. And in fact, that's what this warning is here that says seven of the wave components. These are going to be shorter wave com uh, shorter period waves um, that, are, that are more strongly affected by the, by the uh, opposing current. And if you play with something like this, as you increase the current, you'll see more and more of the waves are not able to be resolved. So if we play back, I've got the same camera view in these three scenarios. Um, so we're looking at the same perspective and, and otherwise the same sea state. This is the opposing current scenario. And this is a scenario with no current at all. And this is with uh, a following current. And the, otherwise the, the significant wave height and the peak period is the same. So you can see very clearly, I think in this example, that with a following current, the wavelengths are much longer. The sea surface looks much smoother. And then this is the uh, in-between scenario. This is what the sea state looks like without any current. And then when we have an opposing current, it's a lot more sharp. Uh, you're seeing more uh, steepness uh, in the waves, uh, even just visually from this perspective. Now, what are the implications of this? Well, when you have steeper waves, usually it means there's an opportunity for more accelerations for things racing up and going down. Uh, the face of the waves going down the back of the waves, you can get more accelerations, more dynamic loads and motions. I mean, it depends on the floating system, of course, but it's something to be aware of. The other thing is that um, in uh, either opposing or following C, the current adds on top of the wave particle motions, which are normally sort of very circular or in shallower depths, more elliptical. That can cause some interesting effects on anything that's relying on uh, viscous effects, like in uh, hull appendages or moorings or things like that. So uh, it, it makes for a very interesting scenario and, and well worth looking at. Just be careful when you're looking at extreme currents um, as it can cause some issues uh, with the, uh, the sea states. But certainly something to consider in coastal environments. Anyway, uh, just a, an interesting user question and I uh, wanted to expand on it with some visualization. And of course, you can read more about it in the Proteus DS manual. Thanks for watching.